The Art of Enough with artist Jay Sullivan. Episode 2, Gaining Awareness. The man climbed over the mountain, the man climbed over the mountain, the man climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? (laughs) Are you always climbing the highest mountains? Always putting yourself into stressful situations that require all of your skill, all of your determination, all of your energy, just to get over the top and back down onto level ground? Are you a perfectionist in some area of your life? Your parenting, your relationships, your work, your art, where no matter how hard you try, no matter how much progress you make, it just doesn't feel like you've done enough. Welcome to The Art of Enough, a podcast series that can help you understand the causes of not feeling enough and provide some guidance on how psychology, neuroscience, and creative process can help you transcend this and other problematic emotions. Hi, I'm artist Jay Sullivan. In the first podcast, we explored how my feelings of not being enough started in childhood. I explained that when I was a young child, my father had a series of bipolar episodes that forced him to leave the home. The five-year-old me thought it was my fault, and it caused me to adopt a pattern of behavior that I naively thought would keep it from happening again. Namely, my drive to be better, to do more, to be the perfect kid, to climb the highest mountains. In this podcast, we're going to explore awareness, specifically how I became aware over the course of many years of the impact that my father's mental illness had upon my life and how it caused me to be a habitual mountain climber. For most of my life, I was unaware of why I was always climbing the highest mountains, and I rationalized it as normal. It was necessary to my life as an entrepreneur, as a creative professional, as one who was committed to social justice and helping others. Doing more than people expected of me led to many successes in my life, but it also led to great anxiety. Many times I'd find myself in great stress after attempting to do too much, after putting too much on my plate. And then I'd ask myself, why did I do this to myself again? Why did I do this to myself again? The pain of having to ask this question over and over again, over many years, finally led me to seek answers, to seek awareness. Jean-Claude Van Italy is a longtime meditator, self-identified habitual self-improver, playwright of over 30 plays, and author of the book, Tea with Demons. He spoke to me from Shantigar, a creative retreat center he founded in western Massachusetts. It's very difficult, as you are in your life having your problems, to turn around, so to speak, to look at this enormous demon of your past. It takes courage to look at these demons, to say my life has been run by that for so many years, that I'm not really in logical, rational control. Becoming aware of them is is a major step. The awareness itself makes a huge difference. It's like a spotlight. It's light. It's turning light on that which has been unseen which has been in the dark. The light of awareness mitigates the demons. I've spent the last 30 years trying to see what was previously unseen, to gain awareness of the demons, as Jean-Claude might say. I've followed many different paths, from reading books on neuroscience and attending Tony Robbins seminars, to going to immersive 10-day transformational retreats, to experiencing rebirthing and dance therapies, to... Well, many, many more. In this podcast, I'll explain how several of these paths, meditation, psychotherapy, and art making, all gave me meaningful insight into my mountain climbing addiction during the creation of The Art of Enough and led to positive emotional and psychological change. 
Meditation, psychotherapy, and art making all, in some way, are techniques for becoming aware of problematic emotions and experiences that lie in the subconscious and bringing them into the conscious mind. So hopefully, you can let go of them. Oh. Oh. Meditation is a technique to achieve awareness, not a technique to achieve awareness of any particular thing, but it's a, it's, it's a technique for entering a state of awareness. Meditation is a kind of letting go. What do you let go into? Well, your breath. You, you, you pay attention to your breathing. It's a way of it's a way of of exploring inner space. Just becoming aware. Awareness is a great tool. Oh. 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 I was sitting on a meditation pillow in my upstairs bedroom on a Sunday afternoon, and I was angry. Angry like I had never been angry before angry. I was playing on a baseball team for the first time in many years. It was a team that I found through the newspaper, and I didn't know any of the other players. And they didn't know me. I had played baseball in high school and college, so I was used to being one of the starters. Well, on this team, I found myself on the bench. How could this be? If there was one thing that I'd always been good at, it was baseball. After the second Sunday of sitting on the bench, I left the field very, very angry. I arrived home furious. I had just learned about meditation, so in my angry state, I sat on a pillow and just tried to meditate on this feeling of anger. Soon, in my mind's eye, I saw a horizon with a black cloud. There was a black cloud, and it was coming towards me faster and faster. And then, blackness. In that instant, it hit me. Oh, yeah. My father had been in a psychiatric hospital when I was a child. He was mentally ill. He was bipolar. I hadn't thought about my father's trips to the psychiatric hospital in 25 years, but after this meditation experience, it was a quick leap to understand how this past experience was causing me to be very angry in the present. Before his mental illness took control, he and I spent summer evenings together playing catch in the backyard, throwing a baseball back and forth, back and forth. I was very good at this game of catch, and it made me feel deeply connected to my father. Then he was suddenly gone. He was no longer there to play catch with. It was very painful, and it made me very angry as a young child. This moment of meditation brought the awareness that my anger at age 30 was not about not being able to play on Sunday, but was more connected to not being able to play catch with my dad at age 5. This realization was astounding to me. It was the first time that I became aware that an event from my past was controlling my present. So meditation has been a valuable tool for gaining awareness. Psychotherapy, or maybe better known as just therapy these days, has also been instrumental in helping me explore the subconscious, 
to become aware of an experience or a story that's driving an unwanted behavior or belief. Awareness in the therapy setting many times comes by focusing on the feeling connected with the past experience or story. Therapist and educator Bob Zeta, who has spent three decades counseling individuals and families, spoke to me from his office in Freehold, New Jersey. He explains the connection between present feelings and past experiences. The, the way to get back to those forgotten uh, events is to start with the feeling. I, I will ask people to... Take a breath, relax, close your eyes. I may even do a little uh, uh, relaxation activity to um, get out of the, the present and to focus on the feeling. Um, and then say, when else in your life did you have that feeling or a similar feeling? And often in a relaxed, you know, kind of semi-meditative state, that, that feeling... Uh, will bring up memories. Sometimes these memories trigger buried inner voices, voices that you developed in childhood in response to the world around you. One of these buried voices from my past first came into my awareness during a therapy session. It was several years before I started this project, but in many ways it foreshadowed the art of enough. I don't remember the context, but in the middle of focusing on a feeling, I had an emotional, cathartic release, and this phrase came screaming into my brain. No matter what I do, it will never be enough. No matter what I do, it'll never be enough. As you can imagine, if you have this inner voice that you will never be enough no matter what you do, and you're an overachiever, which compels you to be constantly doing more, Life can be very frustrating because no matter what you do or how much you do it, it's never going to be enough. Coming to the awareness that I was operating this way was a very helpful first step towards untangling and disempowering these two conflicting beliefs. But it was only a first step. It would be a few years before I was ready to tackle this issue head on in a major art project. So far, we've covered the role of meditation and psychotherapy in the creation of the art of enough. Next up is art making or creative process. One note before we start. Much of what I present in these podcasts is not DIY, meaning do it yourself. I'm continually interacting with a group that includes a therapist, meditation and breathwork coaches, art colleagues, and other resources throughout the creative and art making process. So if you're going to start exploring past experiences and emotions in your art making process or in any process, I highly recommend that you work with a therapist, a coach, or an advisor, or all of the above to help you get to a positive outcome. The Art of Enough, as a formal art-making project, first took shape when I was working on a different project, this one about family ancestry. I was working on a series of photographs about my long-deceased great-grandfather, a coal miner in the early 1900s. He and his wife had eight children, and unlike other families who took their children out of school at around age 12 so they could work in the mines to help support the family, He and his wife kept the children in school. Most of them went on to careers outside the mines. My grandmother, one of the children, went on to become a head nurse at one of New York's largest hospitals. As I contemplated one of the photographs, one that symbolized my great-grandfather's death from black lung disease, a question entered my consciousness. Did he feel like he had done enough? For all that my great-grandfather had done for his children, getting them educated so they could leave the mines, and then seeing the impact that that had on their children, did he feel like he had done enough? This question led to this verse about my great-grandfather, Charles Spellman. Spellman, a simple gravestone with a simple name. Did I do enough? Below this ground of ash and rain, when will I be enough? 
four children grown, but another two maimed. Why did I not do enough? A doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, a friend. Why can't this be enough? A simple gravestone with a simple name. Did I do enough below this ground of ash and rain? When will I say enough? One of my colleagues at the time rightly pointed out that this verse was about me. During the writing process, a voice from my subconscious had risen up and infused the work, which, of course, is what all artists want. This written verse, emerging during an art-making process, was the clearest indication yet that my feelings of not being enough needed to move to the front burner. I started The Art of Enough as an intentional, daily, creative, and art-making practice about a year later. <laughs> While I'm involved in making art, I'm usually working with photography or video, but also voice, movement, and acting exercises are a valuable tool. Jean-Claude Van Italy and performance coach Carol Fox Prescott first introduced me to acting exercises and personal storytelling techniques as a way to personal awareness. The goal of these exercises are to help actors and non-actors be more creative and more spontaneous. Much like meditation, it's a process of clearing out the conscious mind to stop thinking about the technical skills of acting or performance and work or create from the subconscious. I use these acting exercises in several different ways. Sometimes I use them early in the process as a gateway to awareness, improvising with my body and voice around a particular theme to see what emerges from my subconscious. Or other times late in the process as part of the final artworks as I did when I created a series of Charlie Chaplin-esque video self-portraits. In The Art of Enough, it was midway through the project. I decided to revisit John claude and his transformational acting exercises to further explore my feelings of not being enough, this time in a guided workshop environment. I was standing on top of a hillside overlooking a fall-colored valley at Jean-Claude Van Italy's Creative Retreat Center in Western Massachusetts. Jean-Claude asked each of us from the group to stand up one at a time and tell us about a dream that we had had the night before. I had done this exercise many times, and I knew part of the technique was to avoid mapping out the whole story beforehand. It's best that you have a general idea of the dream, but when you stand up, you stay with your breath and then just let come out whatever needs to come out, to be spontaneous. My intent was to tell a dream about being at a baseball stadium and not being able to hit the baseball. But when I checked in with my breath and waited for an impulse, I started retching. Retching, retching, retching. People later said that it looked like an exorcism. When the retching subsided... It suddenly and briefly turned into laughter. And then the experience was over. Looking back, I now realize that this moment of exorcism was the start of a process of freeing myself from the dark corners of my past. But it was just a start, because in that moment, on top of the hill, I was still securely tethered to the pain of the past. But for one briefest of moments... I had let it all go. Six months later, the process of freeing myself from this self-imposed entanglement with the past would take the next step and find its way into my artwork and my life. You'll hear about this in Podcast 4. During The Art of Enough, at the suggestion of Jean-Claude, I reinstated a dormant meditation practice as a way to slow down and stop climbing the highest mountains. He emphasized that it was important that I meditate daily, even if it was just for 10 minutes, an instruction that harkens back to a guideline from Podcast One. Repetition is necessary to long-term change. 
So I started a 10-minute daily meditation practice. I would highly recommend it, and if you don't have prior experience with meditation, there are plenty of resources online to help you get started. 10 minutes of meditation a day does not seem like a lot, but just taking the time to sit and pay attention to your breath in some way to reinforce the notion that I did not have to do anything, that sitting there for 10 minutes was the antidote to thinking that there was a high mountain somewhere to climb. Plus, I developed some new insights. Not deep, held long experiences or memories, but moments of insight or clarity that helped me slow down, reduce anxiety, and become more creative. I can't say these insights came during the meditation process, but I can say they emerged because I was meditating, and that created a heightened sense of awareness long after the meditation session ended. I adapted these insights into some guidelines, simple phrases that help me remember them so they become a repetitive part of my routine. Remember, repetition is necessary to long-term change. One insight was that I had the most stress when I felt rushed. Those instances when I was afraid that I would run out of time and whatever it was that I was working on wouldn't be good enough. I developed this guideline to help reduce this impulse. When feeling stressed, simplify the deliverable or change the delivery date. Changing the complexity of the deliverable makes it easier to complete. And of course, changing the delivery date gives me more time to complete it, both making the process less stressful and more enjoyable. Yes, I understand that this may not always be possible Apply this guideline in low-risk situations to start and then go from there and see what happens. You'll probably find out, as I did, that many times in the past I was over-delivering and causing myself a lot of work and a lot of stress. Also, I've always been driven by getting to the end result, making the big goal, the big check mark, getting over the top of the mountain. So, during the Art of Enough, I started to work with this guideline. Instead of goal-based experiences, have time-based experiences. I try to keep my focus on experiencing the moment of creating art instead of getting to the end result. One way I did this was to set strict time limits to my art-making time. For example, I wrote from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then I took a two-hour lunch break and I worked in the studio from 3 to 6 p.m. So, instead of trying to, quote, get something done today, end quote, I just focused on experiencing what I was doing in the moment, and when the time allotted for that day ended, I stopped working. Whether I was in the middle of a sentence, setting up a shot, or retouching an image, I just stopped. By focusing on the moment and not on the end result, it makes the conclusion of the project, when I get there, feel more like a gradual, soft landing, rather than my previous experiences, which felt more like a big push up a very large mountain. Finally, I had to remind myself to become comfortable with doing less. Most of us who are addicted to overachieving are doing, doing, doing because we believe something bad will happen if we don't. Once you start doing less, like spending 10 minutes meditating each day or delivering a less complex deliverable, and your life gets better instead of worse, you start to become comfortable doing less and you start to strengthen those connections in the brain. Doing less now becomes normal. You can learn more about these three guidelines and other guidelines in Podcast 5. He stopped and enjoyed the view. He stopped and enjoyed the view. He stopped and enjoyed the view. In this podcast, we explored meditation, psychotherapy, and art making as ways to become aware of limiting experiences and behaviors that reside in the subconscious and bring them to the surface. In the next podcast, I want to talk about a tool that is essential to all three of these. That is the breath. Yes, breathing. 
As we learned in this podcast, it's the foundation of meditation and it's a tool of psychoanalysis. It's also essential in creative arts, particularly in performing arts. So, in the next podcast, we'll explore how proper breathing can reduce anxiety, important if you want to stop climbing the highest mountains, increase awareness, and increase creativity. This has been The Art of Enough. I'm Jay Sullivan, and may your day be filled with awareness.